Hi, welcome to another training video in Excel. Um, today we're going to be talking about automation and macros in particular, which is where you record yourself doing a certain sequence of steps and then you play back those actions when you want to do the same set of things again. Now this can be absolutely brilliant, um, but there are several pitfalls that you may fall into when you first start out. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of these um, and hopefully you'll avoid making the same mistakes. So here we are in Excel, and I'm just going to open up a file that's got some data in it. Um, and this is on my desktop, so I'll just go to my desktop. And it's a file called Sales Data. So this is just some uh, made-up data that salespeople and make of car they've sold. Now, what I want to do is I want to record myself turning this into a pivot table. Uh, do we put that pivot table on a new sheet? And then we'll stop and we'll actually have a look at the code and we'll play it back and we'll see why it comes up with an error, if it does. Um, so first of all, I'm going to start recording. And you'd normally give this a, a name that's relevant. And I'm going to save it in this workbook, which is the one with the actual data in. At the moment, this makes no difference because I'm not going to save it here anyway. I'm, not, I'm just recording it here for the time being. Okay, so it started to record. You'll notice you've got the icon down there that says it's recording. Now, you can also do this from the developer ribbon, and I would advise doing this if you're in your early stages of doing recording. And the reason is you can see whether the relative references are turned on or off. You don't want to use relative references for most of your recordings. So I've selected my data, or I've clicked inside the data. I'm now going to insert a pivot table. It's going to go on a new worksheet. I don't want to add it to the data model. And you'll notice that it has actually selected all of that range of data. Click OK. There it is on a new sheet. I'm just going to take a um, couple of different things. The salesperson. Uh, let's put the make in the row. So there's some examples of salespeople, what makes they sold, and how much they sold each cumulatively for. I'm now going to stop recording and I'll go ahead and delete. In fact, I'll leave that sheet there. We'll just go back to our sales data. Um, let's have a look at the code quickly. Um, so I do Alt F11 and this brings up the code. Code is stored in modules and I double click there and it shows me the code. So that's all it did to actually create uh, a pivot table from that data. And you'll see how it says add in a sheet, which is a new sheet. And then it puts the data on that new sheet. OK, let's try now and run this macro. So again, you can go to the developer ribbon, macros, and it's macro one that I want to run. Almost immediately, it comes up with a problem. And the problem is this. It's creating a new sheet called sheet one. In my workbook, Sheet 1 already exists, so it tried to do stuff on Sheet 1, but Sheet 1 already exists. So instead of that, it created a new workbook called workbook, uh, Sheet 2, but now it's trying to do something onto Sheet 1 instead of onto the sheet it's just created. The other thing, which is the real cause of the problem, is it's created a pivot table called Pivot Table 1. Pivot Table 1 already exists here. Pivot table one already exists. It can't create it again if it already exists. So there are two problems there straight away. The name of the sheet that it's created needs to be consistent. And the name of the pivot table that's been created needs to be consistent. In other words, when I say consistent, it needs to be a pre-named field or a pre-named thing. Or you can go into the code and edit it. So let's have a look and see what we can do here with this. Um, so I'd need to actually change that to a certain sheet. I'd need to make sure I've named this sheet here as well. An easier way of doing it is to have not recorded the, the code in this sheet, but to re sorry, in this workbook, but to record the code in a different workbook. So I'm going to close this one down and not save the changes. I'm now going to create a new blank workbook. You'll notice this has come up as book two. It doesn't matter. I'm going to rename it first of all. 
I'm going to record the macro and save the macro from and in this workbook. So straight away, I'm going to save as, and I'm putting it on the desktop again, but I'm going to call this um, report macro. And I'm not going to save it as an Excel workbook. I'm going to save it as an Excel macro enabled workbook. And I click save. So here it is, report macro Excel SM, M for macros. I'm also going to name a couple of sheets. So I'm going to name this one start sheet. Later on, I'll put a button on there. And I'm going to create another sheet and I'll call this one report. And let's actually create another one. We'll call it pivot. If I actually write in the correct place. Okay, so we're going to start on the start sheet. I'm just going to initially put a button on here, which will eventually run my macro, although it will do nothing at the moment. Um, so I've clicked on the button. I'm just going to line that up in the middle and center, make it a little bit bigger. Now, clearly that does nothing at the moment because I haven't assigned a macro because I haven't recorded the macro. I'm doing so at the moment. OK, so what we want to do is go from the start sheet. We want to open the other file. We want to copy the data. We then want to come to the report sheet, paste it into A1. We then want to go to the pivot table and again create a new pivot table on this sheet. But we'll name things as we go. So we'll name the pivot table as we create it. I'm going to start off on the start sheet. I'm going to start recording my macro. I'm just going to call this one uh, generate report. And I'm going to save it in this workbook and I'm going to click OK. I don't need a keyboard shortcut to run it because I'm going to run it from that button. OK, I'm now recording. So the first thing I want to do is open the file which has my data in it. Now, another problem that some people come across is if I straight away selected all that data by doing perhaps control A, um, firstly, that's not what you want to do when you're recording a macro. Secondly, you need to make sure that the cell that you have selected, you've specified that cell rather than just using the cell that is already selected. The cell that's selected there, is, the reason that's selected is because that's the cell that was selected when the workbook was last saved. I'm going to select the cell next to it. So the machine has recorded me physically selecting a different cell. Um, if I now did control A, the machine would look at the range of data that is there now and hard code in that range of data as a selection. Instead, I'm going to do control asterisk. Now what that does is it selects the region of the cell I had selected, which was B3. So that's what I want to do instead. Make sure you do control asterisk rather than control A. I'm now going to copy this data. I'm going to go back to my other workbook and go to report sheet. I'm going to select A1 and paste. I'm now going to click back in A1. I'm going to now say insert a pivot table. What range am I going to use? Well, I'm going to use the range that is automatically picked up from A1. And again, you'll notice that is hard coded in. I'm not going to leave it hard coded in. I'm going to use the same piece of code that was there before, which says cell A1 current region. So that's what I want to generate my pivot table from. Now, what that means is if I bring in a different sized set of data, my pivot table will be generated from that new sized piece of data instead of the exact same size as this one is. I'm going to put it on an existing worksheet and I will choose that. It's on pivot table A1. Um, I'm not going to add it to the data model at this stage. So I click OK. It's put that in. I can now just uh, create something. I'll just drag some fields down. And now I can stop recording. Let's have a look at the code now. First of all, I'm going to close down that other file. And have a quick look at the code. I'm going to switch back to my start sheet. 
I do Alt F11. If I press the right keys. Uh, and let's go to the modules and we'll have a look at the actual code that's been generated. So here is where it said range B3 select and then the current region select. Now some of these are unnecessary. I don't need to say select and then do something with the selection. Um, what I can do is say with range B3 current region select and then again I don't need to say with the selection selection copy I can just say with B3 current region copy straight away so now I've switched workbooks I'm switching sheets I'm selecting A1 and I'm pasting into A1 I've then got another selection of A1 and the reason is because um, I then rather than having the whole of this sh the, the, the paste still selected I clicked back in cell A1. I don't actually need that. So again, down here, I'm now making a pivot table, but the source data for that pivot, remember, was hard-coded in. Now, this looks slightly different, but it was an absolute reference, and I don't want it to be that. What I want it to be is something very similar to that, except I want it to be A1 current region. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to select the source data range here. And it's not going to be in quotes this time. And it does need to be, I'm going to make it A1, just to guarantee that it's always in that range. I'm also going to come up here and change that to A3. So it's always the very first cell. Um, Let's come down and have a look at something else. Down there, it's given the pivot table a name. And that name will straight away be a problem because that will be the one that will try and generate table two again the next time I run this. So instead of that, I'm going to give this a different name. I'm going to call it report pivot. And what you can do is you can now do a find and replace I'm going to say replace report pivot and that's what I want to replace with and the thing I'm looking for is pivot table 2 and let's replace all and it's made four replacements so it's a good idea to use this find and replace um, not a good idea if you're just saying pivot table or pivot because there's lots of instances of the word pivot which will completely mess it up but if you choose the whole of the name report sorry pivot table 2 and replace with the report pivot that works fine okay um, that means you don't actually miss any because it's quite easy to miss things when you're looking in the code like this now because we put it on an, a sheet that was already named it's not a problem we've now generated a pivot table with a specific name so that's also not a problem Okay, this should now be pretty much bulletproof and it should work. So let's have a look at it. Let's just uh, let's start clearing off the stuff that I did by mistake. And I'm going to start emptying these pages as I don't need the data on there because the macro will put that data on there for me. I have no other file open as you can see and I'm now going to right click on this button and I'm going to say assign the macro my generate report that's the macro I want to assign now to run my macro instead of having a keyboard shortcut I simply click that button and it runs the macro for me you'll notice it opened the other file it selected a3 rather than b3 it then selected the whole region of data it then switched back to my file here went to report sheet pasted the data in it then selected that entire region of data and generated a pivot table with the following fields selected of course I could go on then and do some fancy things like save or print um, but that doesn't uh, demonstrate the thing I'm trying to show here what I'm trying to show here is that when you generate new things named items they're named incrementally by Excel things like sheets, pivot tables, tables, objects generally. 
Um, so if you want to make your code actually work, what you need to do is just go into the code and find anywhere where it has a table one, pivot table one, pivot table six, whatever, and just rename them throughout the code. In order to get all of them, it's best to use finder and replace because that way you get all instances of it. I hope that's been useful. Um, hopefully it'll save some people making mistakes. And once more, thank you for listening.